Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Uh, maybe how to know if one is surrounded by positive and or negative energy. You'll feel it. <laughs> negative energy is negative energy, positive energy is positive energy. And negative energy you can put your tongue on a 9 volt battery, the square one. I wouldn't put it too long. Huh? You just tap your tongue, oh, <laughs> that feeling is negative energy because the frequency of the battery and the frequency of your being is clashing. So anytime you're at and resonating at a higher frequency, the lower frequency when it comes near you it has a zzzz because it's a lower frequency and your field of energy is pushing that away. So when it clashes with your field of energy is hence the discomfort because it's coming into your, your, your frequency, your area of energy that you've built. When you lower your frequency and you resonate at a very low frequency, all the low energies and bad energies come around the person. That's why I said they're not awakened. So there's a movie called Odd Thomas that somebody sent to us, Odd Thomas, like the name Thomas. And just for the symbols and the images, we don't know about the story plot, that's not important, but the images that people walk around with all these creatures all around them because that's the low frequency that they emanate. And that's exactly why shaitan is propagating what he propagates, right? He puts out the bad music so that really bad energies can accompany you. He puts bad movies so real bad energies can accompany you. So everything he uses he knows the frequency fields, he knows that he has to contaminate the ears so that his demons can get and approach you. He knows he has to contaminate your eyes so that these demons can come and approach you. So he knows what he's doing and because it's harder to learn from angels and easier to learn from demons because they're more prevalent. So when you watch this demonic world what it's doing you begin aware, oh look they're going after everybody's ears with these horrible songs, why? To attach beings onto them. They go after all these demonic movies and now the movies at your fingertip. Horrific things that you can be watching and inappropriate things on the fingertip of every child holding a phone. Why? To again contaminate. And if you resonate and build your energy with zikr and salawats and the awrads that they're giving, your soul now is emanating at a high frequency. So there are devices now that are on, on the phone, they are frequency emulators. I showed the guys there's a thing where they tap the glass and there's an app that can hear the frequency of the glass, let's say 13,000 megawatts whatever, I don't know the numbers. Then they have another app that replicates that sound that frequency and it puts out that pitch. So the one hears the pitch and another app replicates the pitch and they can take that app that replicates the vibration of this glass and they put it next to it and in a few seconds the glass shatters because it's emanating at a sound. If you take the frequency of something and reverse it back to it you can disrupt its structure and bring everything down. And this is the power of ham. So when you, your hamd is strong, your praise is strong, your zikr is strong, your muraqabah and connections are strong because muraqabah is how are you going to get energy more than what you have upon yourself. You need to take a breath but you only have one lung. How do you go swimming and diving in an ocean that's deep? You have two little lungs you think is meant to go down deep? Or they put a whole pipe onto you, a mask onto your face and say, now go down 300 feet, 200 feet. It's not your own lungs but now there's a support coming. So there's a whole machine breathing for you and sending a lifeline of breath for you. Same as in the madad that with my energy how am I going to defend myself against this onslaught of shayateen? Then Allah says, no problem, put the mask on, learn how to do the madad, 
this energy field will begin to approach and make its way to you, to begin to dress you and bless you from its energy and begin to surround you from its energy. And enough of this energy begin to build upon you, your energy becomes stronger. So in elementary school they taught us magnetism. They go back to your elementary school classes and magnetism is they would get the battery, one of those bigger batteries with the two slots on it and they would take a wire and they would put it on the positive and negative and say, look, you put this wire onto something and try to attract paper clips and it would attract very little. Then they taught you the concept of coiling the wire. So they would take this wire and put a, a, like a nail and coil it many times like 10, 20 times they would coil it and then make the connection. This would then magnetize and when it would magnetize it would collect all the paper clips coming. The coiling is madat. You're trying to connect and coil yourself with these awliyaullah that they come, they come, they come and they are from the jinn and ins that they're coming by support. You're asking for support from Allah He's teaching how to coil yourself and magnetize yourself and then you become magnetic character and you become magnanimous. All these phrases, oh you have very magnanimous character, ayah because they're coiling themselves with all of these energies. And as a result their charge become very strong and this is the reality in Haqiqat al-Juzbah. Very simple science courses that we all took in 4th, 5th, 6th grade. You don't have to think of it as like it's so oh my god there's like you know heavenly stuff that doesn't exist. No, no we took it all in school and it's called magnetism and how to create a magnetic charge, how to take the iron within your body and create a magnetic charge. Once you become charged as a magnet you have magnetism and that's the same word for like a good character or people are attracted to you from the magnetism. This is then the fayas, these awliyaullah they're continuously coiling around you, all around you and they're sending their fayas, their energies, their du'as, their blessings upon you and this becomes a source of all their barakah and blessings from Allah to Sayyidina Muhammad because this is always the same, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. Allah want to send all these blessings always through the heart of Prophet From Prophet it cannot come directly to you, it would blow you up. So it comes then to his Ulul Am, then moves down this mirroring system and each time step lower, step lower, step lower until they can dress you with these fires. If they dress you too hard again you out. That's when Nabi Musa wanted, let me see you. He says, I don't think you can see me but I send you my glory. Whatever he saw was so much for him that it killed him. And this is Kalimullah that he was like dust out. Allah had to revive him back. So then for us then it's always step down, slow, step down, step down and this is moving through mirrors to reach to us to a level in which we can contain it and not have harm from it inshaAllah. Say if one is under a demon attack and then and their body is in pain, can you please guide us on what to recite? Yeah, demon attack is uh, <coughs> <you're> spooky. <laughs> Can't help you, bye bye, call somebody else. <laughs> De- demons don't deal with that, humans. If a demon <laughs> if it's truly a demon, uh, you would have taken your head off by now and eaten you. You're, you're talking about just naughty jinns. Demonic attack is, is something that you can't even be typing and even watching our face right now. That's not something you understand. The, the naughty jinns are being sent by people, email us because there's a whole system again. It's not just one thing you recite, everybody wants now the McDonald's version of let me just drive through and uh, give me this and uh, I'm, I'm on my way. 
but McDonald's is closed and they're also being sued for COVID violation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no more drive through health and there's no drive through tariqa either. Everything is a series of being locked in and studying, understanding the wudu, understanding the energy and most important supporting. You know support is a sign of your faith. If you go to a doctor and you go from doctor to doctor to three clinics, you probably won't really get any help because you know you're just going around left and right. But once you engage with a physician, you start to pay the bills, you're a patient of that physician, you're locked in. More only Allah are wakeels, so they're attorneys and law firms. If you're going to hire the Naqshbandi law firm, there's a big retainer. And once you're involved with Naqshbandiya, then the whole team of these only Allah are supporting you. So it's no different than dunya. You go to dunya and try to get free advice. Free advice is, is just as good as the freeness that you got from it. But you want real support, lock your foot with them. Tie yourself in with them and begin to do the practices, begin to do the awrad, begin to do the zikr. It becomes a way of life, you know. To give someone a fish has no value to Prophet but to teach them to fish with you, by the time you've trained and by the time you've disciplined and why the giving is that you're not going to go anywhere. If you're planning on bouncing around to 20 different shaykhs on the internet, good luck for you and if you want to give them all donations then you know you must be super wealthy. But if you're going to dedicate yourself to one shaykh and learn and be a student of that shaykh, you're locked. Because he said, I'm enrolled, I'm years with this person, I've developed a relationship with them, I'm studying, I'm doing my awrads, I'm doing the, the knowledges. Now you're somebody who knows how to fish. You've not only acquired the ability, you fought off all of these difficulties and all of these satanic influences. At the same time the shaykh has replicated himself in you. He's made you a replica of himself. So that wherever you go on this earth, you're like an image of him. You teach what he teaches, you know what he knows, you act like he acts and hopefully you're doing a good job and not you know ruining, ruining that representation. And that's what we have other talks of being an ambassador for this reality. We represent Prophet We can't go out and molest and humiliate and, and, and steal and cheat from people. You're representing Sayyidina Muhammad and you're representing your shaykh and the shaykhs who've been giving all their fires and all their teaching so that you become exemplars of faith. That's what's important. Not just opening the window of the zawiyah and handing out fish to people, one dollar fish, one dollar fish, one dollar fish, two dollar fish, two dollar fish, two dollar fish. yeah. But teach them, no, no, bring them in and make them uh, duplicates of yourself. What you learn from your shaykhs, teach them so that they all have now your characteristics. When you come to see any of these students, they better be really loving and very kind and very good and very generous. That means then they learn from their shaykh good character and a good example and a good way inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, how to best live among those family who don't have any understanding of energy or energetic practices? Alhamdulillah, Allah wants it that way, that's in from the talks of Sayyidina Yusuf That he lives with a father who's a prophet, brother, eleven brothers who many ulama say were prophets, some argued on the internet that they're not prophets, whatever you want to call it, eleven highly blessed brothers <laughs> and the brothers wanted to kill him. So Allah is teaching you. Your path is uniquely for you, it's not meant for anyone else, keep a path of silence. So the first step of the way is some is silence. You're not supposed to explain it to anyone because you don't even know it yourself yet. You're not supposed to describe it to family and friends and everyone else because you'll get confused and you'll confuse people. So the way wasn't about propagating. Unfortunately there are many people now of, don't need to we don't want to make a whole group of people to be angry with us. But people who don't get attention at home now become copy-paste shaykhahs on the internet, right?
they don't get the respect and the feeling they want from home. The internet became like a masjid for them. They copy this shaykh, post it out and they get two likes. They copy this shaykh and they post this out, they get five likes. Before they know it they feel like they're shaykhs now, copy paste shaykhs. They copy pasted this awrad, they put it out, copy paste this awrad, they put that out. That's not guidance and, and for us it's like a medical office, I always refer it back to medical office because their degrees are high, you know, their, their degree is higher than your highest Harvard law school, medical school to be granted a degree from Allah the creator of all the universes through order of Sayyidina Muhammad down to the order of the shaykhs when they come out with an ijazah it's, it's beyond the understanding of a med degree and law degree, it's a clinic. So when they start giving prescriptions and wazifas their soul stands behind that and they ask Prophet that to give it its barakah and give it its blessings. Even if it's deficient in something make it to work because they did it. So Allah doesn't disappoint His awliya and embarrass them. So whatever they put out Allah blesses. If it's incorrect they make their istighfar pull and add to whatever has to be added. But copying and pasting some shaykh's prescription isn't the same as the shaykh posting that. And then his authorized students are reposting that information. That's a nuskhah, it's a prescription that has a power. So when they give you an awrad and a zikr to do for a condition, a time or whatever's happening on this earth and in every area may be different and Prophet has different prescriptions for different shaykhs, not all shaykhs are all the same, none of them are the same and Prophet may want to see your belief in your shaykh. A different shaykh has a different prescription because this also testing. If one shaykh says, here recite this whole thing, another shaykh says, no just drink this water. So, oh he doesn't know what he's doing, no he knows, maybe your belief in him and that water it will be the healing that you needed. Means every prescription is coming by order of Prophet for that shaykh to test your belief. Don't mix and match and don't copy paste everybody's prescriptions all over the uh, internet because those can also be toxic. If you're giving to the wrong person the wrong zikr and they start to lose their mind that's on you. So it means these are like medicines, you can't just go around telling everybody you, you take this antibiotic. What if they're allergic to amoxicillin and you didn't know they were allergic because you're not a shaykh or shaykha. So better just to use the internet as a source of information from authorized representatives, watch it, read it, say, I like, alhamdulillah. But copying and pasting and putting out and then mixing with 10 different people, 10 different shaykhs, 10 different prescriptions, that's where the problem lies and then that becomes nafsani because the person wants attention. Sayyidi, can the connection between the shaykh and the murid develop to a point where fana in the shaykh begins to interact um, from the hadith of being his eyes and ears for the student? Yeah, we have a whole article on that. That's, these are high levels of, <coughs> of keeping the muhabbat and the love for these awliyaullah going deep into their knowledges and into their practices, into the tafakkur until they trained on how to keep the hudur of the shaykh. That at every moment they're trying to keep the hudur and the presence of the shaykh upon themselves and by their good character, their knowledges, their training they're entering into that hudur with the shaykhs replicating his light upon the light of that person. As much as that person goes inside and not coming out to show themselves the more his light can shine through them. The more he comes out or she comes out the less the light of the shaykh will come until they reach a state of mawt qabl al mawt. When they begin to die and not show themselves the light of their shaykh is reflecting through them. 
and the hearing of the shaykh would dress him, the seeing of the shaykh would dress him, the breath of the shaykh would dress him, the hands and the power of the shaykh would dress his hands and his qadam and his feet will be under the madad and support of the shaykh and they become muqaddam. And then they have trained in isolations, they have done all the practices of rajab and shabban, they, they've been for seclusion. These are high levels of, of, of muhabbat, hudur and fana and they keep that state until the shaykh takes them into a seclusion into the muhabbat and the hudur and the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad and then up inshaAllah. We keep getting questions about bayah. This person is asking, can we take bayah with a shaykha? And someone else is asking about, they have a bayah with another shaykh, but then they can they do this awrah? There's always these questions about bayah. Right? Yeah, the bayah is, is a, what we talked about at the beginning that the most important concept of the bayah is to your allegiance to Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad that I'm, I'm trying to reach to the satisfaction of Allah and to the heart and satisfaction of Sayyidina Muhammad These ulul am are facilitators for that reality and they have schools of knowledge to enroll oneself in that school so that you have an opportunity to show your khidmat. So the baya was not that you take baya, I'm going to take something from him. Because the words they're using is an incorrect and that's specifically because the nafs wants to use those words. But it's, I gave baya. Take and give are different. Take, you're coming to get something. Give, he's coming to take everything from you. That's why then this is what? Surah Tawbah, on the wall there Tawfiq is what? Verse 103. Is that 103? Yeah, Surah Tawbah 103. That I'm coming to give bayah to this shaykh. I feel that I want to be under Naqshbandiya, I want to be under the tarbiyah of Sultan awliya Mashaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, and the Naqshbandi shaykhs, and I want to serve them. I want to now give from myself or whatever Allah gave to me and I want to be of khidmat and service to them, inshaAllah they accept me in their service. And then I study from their knowledges, I begin to give support and then I begin to serve. This is then somebody who's muhibeen. Naqshbandiya muhibeen can be millions that they love the way, love the path. Naqshbandi muridiya, they have to have reached the station of irshad. So the shaykh on this earth may only have four, five, six murids and they reach the station of murshid and then their degrees of ijazah and irshad. So muhibbin many and you want to succeed in being muhibbin then the first category we describe, be of service, come to give, come to support, come to learn, not take anything, you're going to give everything. You're going to give your way, your time, everything to reach towards that reality and we have many other talks about that. If you truly believe that your head is on the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad and say, Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib al I won't lift my head. Don't let me lift my head, put your qadam on my neck and keep me in this place. Then you would truly believe that, I, I don't want to do anything other than to be of service to you. So then your whole life would be thinking, how I can serve you Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem? Then you would quickly try to find these shiukh and say, I want to serve, I want to do the mawlid, I want to do the programs, I want to support those programs, I want to propagate your teaching, I want to support your books, your internet, your social media, your video. So that every night I see my head still under the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad And then Prophet become happy with you because the ultimate master of this entire orchestra, he knows he's not going to give everybody a tongue and say, oh I want to talk like him, no. But if he gave you a skill, why aren't you supporting him? 
then you become like a, an amazing ensemble that the one whom has this skill he gives his skill, the one whom has this ability gives his ability, the one who can orate and talk he talks, the one who can support they support. And that becomes the power of tariqahs, all these skills are coming together. MashaAllah how many of these IT men are, are online and doing all these things? It wasn't about everybody giving a sobat. The one person who's talking, okay good for him but everybody else, all these people who are supporting and making that talk to be out because they came, they did their part so that today people can be enjoying this in the middle of a pandemic they're sitting on their couches and this message is nicely coming to them like a kebab and they have apps to read, they have uh, books to get, they have internet and social media everywhere conveniently brought to you by the Naqshbandi first responders. Muhammad Mustafa, get your mask. Huh? And get your mask, inshaAllah. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Muhammad al Mustafa, Arab al Siri Surah al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe. <laughs>